this video, I'll break down how to create these really cool paper effects and transitions using Final Cut Pro 10. Now, the two methods I will go over in this video is how to use digital paper overlays and then how to create more realistic paper effects. So I got my paper overlays from Brian Delmana. The link is going to be down in the description below. But if you want your, your videos, your music videos to have a little more of a realistic texture, you actually want to use a printer and a scanner. So as you can see right here, I actually printed these out and then took like a marker and drew all over them and then scanned them back to my computer. So in this video, I will show you two different methods. Of course, you can choose which method you prefer to use. The digital way is obviously it's a lot cheaper and it's a lot easier. Just simply download. I think the paper release really costs like $50, $60. That's all they're going to cost. You have like, I think a total of like 50 or 60 of them. You have a whole bunch of these really cool overlays. Obviously, you have to actually buy a printer and a scanner. It's going to take a lot more time. So it just depends on which method you prefer. So obviously, that's completely up to you. But in this video, I'll give you a brief overview, overview of both of the methods. And again, you can choose which one you want to use for your own videos. So as you can see, I have the videos open up right here. The first one is this really cool like paper fold um, animation. And then this one is using like digital um, overlays. And of course, this is the one that I just showed you where I printed off these different frames and then just took like a marker and just drew all over them and created this really cool like stop motion effect. So those are three examples that I'll be going over in this video. So let's go ahead and open up the example and I will go over the first effect, which is this really cool like paper fold um, transition. So what you want to do is you can see you have clip one and then clip two. What you want to do is you want to go to the beginning of clip number two. Just make sure you're at the first frame of clip number two and then just click on option F. All that's going to do is it's going to freeze the first frame of the second clip. So as you can see here is the freeze frame. We'll go ahead and just select the freeze frame and we can just decrease the duration to something like maybe like maybe something like 10 frames. So let's go ahead and just zoom in and we're going to place the freeze frame on top of the first clip just to give you a, a good visual representation of what's going on. So as you can see here is clip number one. So clip number one plays and this is a freeze frame and then it transitions into um, the next clip. So that's kind of like the basic overview. So what you want to do is you want to take your playhead and hover over on top of the freeze frame. So you can see that there should be like a number or something like that. You want to make sure that your playhead is hovered over the freeze frame. What you want to go over to do is select here to the export section, select on save current frame, and then of course name it whatever you want. So we can go ahead and just name it um, a freeze frame, head over here to settings, go to export, and you probably want to change this to a PNG, and then just simply click on next. So click on next. Figure out where you want it saved and then just simply click on save. So all you basically did was you just save that current frame. So you just save that frame. And now what you want to do is you want to upload that to like a Google Docs document or a Microsoft Word. In my case, I use a Google Docs document. So I just simply opened up a document and then inserted the image and then just simply printed it to my printer. I have a printer and scanner. It's like a, a two in one thing which it has like a, the copy feature too. It's just like a, kind of an all in one printer and scanner. But of course you may have like a separate printer and scanner, but you want to basically print this image to your, you know, obviously print it to your printer. So all the simple explanation, you're just taking this still frame. So this still frame right here, and you're trying to get this printed out. So once you have it printed out, what you're going to do is you're going to take like, you know, an exacto knife or a scissors or just a knife. Obviously, you know, be cautious and be safe with you know when you're using a knife. But all you're basically going to do is you're just simply going to cut out the image. It's as simple as that. You're literally just taking this piece of paper, and once you have it printed, you're just going to cut it out. So then you're just going to cut it out, and of course you're basically going to do you're going to fold the image and then scan it, fold it, scan it, fold it, scan it, kind of like a rinse and repeat. You're just going to kind of rinse and repeat um, that process. Now what you want to do is you want to have some sort of like um, colored construction paper. You could do green or blue and use a keyer effect. However, I would that doesn't always work sometimes because if there's blue or green in the actual image. It's going to key that out um, too. So what I just did was I just found a, like a, a construction paper. If you want to find like a color that's not in the actual clip, since there was no yellow in the actual image, I decided to use yellow construction paper. So you want to just find some sort of colored construction paper, some sort of colored background. That way when you, when you, you put it back into your computer, scan it back into your computer, you can simply use like a quick selection tool, the mask tool to simply remove the background. I just find that's a lot easier than using the key effect because sometimes that's not um, always accurate. So it's just a simple rinse and repeat cut out the image, fold it, scan it. I just gonna keep doing this over and over again. Now what I basically did was I actually just scanned it to my phone because it's kind of the way my printer is set up. And then I use um, iPhotos or iCloud to basically have it transfer to my um, computer since I'm using um, an iMac and an iPhone because the Photos app it just syncs up. Of course you could airdrop it to your um, computer or there's just a whole bunch of other things you can do. That is basically what I did. So go ahead and you know, you'll figure out how to basically get your, your, your printer image, rip it up, 
scan it, and then get that somehow get that scan image somehow to your phone or to your um, computer. Now, once you have it scanned to your computer, you want to basically cut out the image. Now, you could obviously use Photoshop. You could use the Draw Mask tool in Final Cut. There are a whole bunch of different methods. In this case, I use Pixelmator Pro. So I simply just downloaded this to the App Store. I think it costs $30, $40, super cheap. It's basically like Photoshop for Apple. So once you have it opened up, go ahead and click on Create a New Document. And then we're gonna have here, you can create a new document, You know, of course, a change in these resolutions, because I already use this one 1920 by 1080, I'm just simply going to create a new document. You obviously probably want the resolution to match up with the resolution of your project. Now we're gonna go ahead and just uh, minimize, move the window over here. And now we're simply gonna drag the image into the document we just created. Just double click, make sure you select on the arrow tool. And all you're gonna do is you're simply going to adjust the image to make sure as you can see, it just fits and lines up right there. Now what you're gonna do is you wanna go over here to this tool right here, select on this tool. This is basically like the quick selection tool and then just simply select the actual like paper overlay or whatever you're trying to do. As you can see, we'll go ahead and select it. Now this probably wasn't a good idea because the, the quick selection tool is yellow and it's on yellow construction paper. That's probably not necessarily a good idea. But as you can see, we can just zoom in, go to, and then obviously go to add, subtract. If we select on subtract, we are gonna be making the mask smaller. So you're just gonna go around and basically just adjust it. So you wanna shrink the mask here and basically you're just gonna go around just simply select out or cut out the actual image. And I think that looks pretty cool. Of course, you can select on add to of course make the mask, as you see, make the mask bigger. So that's completely up to you. And then once you have it selected, all you're gonna do is click on select and mask. And then what I do is I go to the softness, I change it to like 15, which is basically the feather and the mask expansion, I change to like negative three. So simple like that. And then so softness 15, expand negative three, click on apply, and now you have cut the image. Now we have to go to image layer, deselect it, and then as you can see, see there we go, we have it selected, it has that checkered board background, which means it's a transparent background. Click on command E, and then of course, I would probably name it like one, two, three, four, five, it's probably gonna be really helpful. So we'll do like zero, one, format, make sure it's dot PNG, that way the background is transparent, export, give it 20, 30 seconds. It's really, it's a really good job of exporting quickly. So if we go over here to um, the finders app, and then head over here to let's say uh, downloads as you can see 001 we're gonna go ahead and just open it up and then as you can see there we go see now you have a transparent background so you want to make sure anytime you're doing something like this cutting out backgrounds you always want to make sure you have a dot PNG background that way the background is transparent and then just simply you know just kind of like rinse and repeat those steps and then you just just keep doing it over and over again however many times you rip the paper up and scanned it and then you're simply going to import those into Final Cut. Now one thing that I forgot to mention is when you're doing this really cool like paper fold um, animation when you first scan in the documents they're going to kind of look like that and they're not going to be fully like scaled up and you know correctly sized so what you want to do is you want to take your freeze frame make sure you have your your freeze frame again this, again this is just this frame so it's the first frame of the second clip you want to take your freeze frame and then what you want to do is you want to take this the individual stuff you scanned and place them like on top of the freeze frame so simply go over here and let's place them on top of the freeze frame, you're gonna go ahead and just simply trim it. And then, so this is what, I, I forgot to mention this, you wanna make sure you do this first. So go ahead, as you can see, this is what it looks like. And what you're gonna do, is you're simply gonna just uh, adjust the rotation and then increase the scale of the actual like thing you just scanned. And then what you wanna do is you wanna simply decrease um, the your opacity. And all you're gonna do is you're simply gonna just uh, like adjust the scale. So as you see, we're just gonna adjust um, the scale. We're going to adjust the position, so as you see, we can of course zoom in to let's say like 200%. So here's his thumb, here's his thumb. So let's go ahead and try our best to, you know, of course try to line that up. You have the two, like his nails are colored right here. So let's go ahead and try to line that up. So I'm not gonna kind of do this and you have this, this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and move this up and try to line this up. So basically all you're doing is you're just going through each, all four of these different images. So if we go ahead and just decrease. So basically these different images that you scanned, all four of them, so you have this one, this one, this one, and this one, and basically all these images that you scanned, and you're simply just gonna place them on top of the freeze frame, decrease the opacity and adjust the position, the scale and rotation to make sure it lines up as best as, best as you can. Once you have it lined up, you wanna go ahead and reset the opacity, and then you go over here to the export section, click on um, save current frame, then save these those individual frames, and then go in Pixelmator and then cut it out, just like I showed you before, but that was a really important step that I forgot 
um, to mention. Okay, so now we're in Final Cut. As you can see, here is clip one, and then here is clip two. So what you wanna do is you just wanna locate where you have them imported. So go over here, scroll down until we find it. And as you can see, it has a black background because these are all, the, all PNG images. So you have one, two, three, and then four. And there you go. So simply, of course, this is why you wanna number them. But we'll simply take one. We're gonna go ahead and apply a two. And then obviously three, four, five, six, however many you have. That's why I think it's really important to number them once you, you know, export them from Photoshop or Pixelmator Pro. Once you remove the background, just go ahead and do that. We're gonna select all of these, click on Control D, and we're gonna set it to three frames. All we simply did was we individually set each frame to last for three frames. So go ahead and simply line up. You wanna line it right before the second clip. And we'll just simply do something like this and just line them up. Make sure the numbers are all um, lined up, all matched up. So if we go ahead and play the video, as you can see, this is what it looks like. You have this really cool paper folding um, transition, simple as that. So here's the first one, one, two, and then here is the third frame. And then basically, as you see, you just and it's just kind of going frame by frame, ripping it up. And then as you can see, there we go. You have this really, really clean paper folding um, transition. And of course, this is just kind of like a brief overview. Hopefully you got a basic idea of how to do it. Now let's go ahead and show you how to create paper effects using digital paper overlays. The next thing I wanna go over is how to use these really cool digital paper overlays from Brian Delmata. So the link is gonna be down in the description below. So what you wanna do is I'll show you two different methods. This is the first method. So simply take the paper overlay and you're basically just gonna import these like you would any normal clip or video. These don't go in a preset or a plugin folder, they're just simply overlays. So we're gonna take the overlay, we're gonna place it on top of the photo and then we're just simply going to trim the photo. We're gonna select on this paper overlay. We're simply going to increase the scale. We're gonna change the blend mode to something like stencil alpha. So as you can see, change the bone to stencil alpha. We are then going to duplicate the paper overlay and we're gonna change the top one to um, screen. So the top one is set to screen and the bottom one is set to stencil alpha. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take the photo and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down option and I'm simply going to duplicate the photo. I'm then going to adjust the timing of this photo to something like five frames. So this is simply the photo which is duplicated. What you wanna do is you wanna select on the, the top photo and we're going to increase the scale to something really big to let's say something like 300. Now what you want to do is once you increase the scale head over here to the effects panel go to all and then we're going to type in draw mask. So basically it's like the pen tool. This allows us to cut stuff out. So simply apply the draw mask onto the top photo and then we're just simply going to try to cut along these white edges. You can of course go here to zoom in and you can really zoom in to get a more precise cutout. And if you ever need to zoom out, go to 50% so you can cut around the actual um, image. And then we're simply going to zoom back into 150 and we're simply going to just cut along, take the draw message, I'm just gonna cut along the paper, um, the white edges. Of course, you can be more precise, it's completely up to you. And then simply, there we go. So as you can see, that looks really cool. So go over here, and if we decrease the top photo, this is what it looks like. It just looks like the photo just scaled in. We are then going to expand this a little bit, and then we are gonna go to the beginning, we're gonna go forward to one, two, three, four, five. We are going to make a cut and then go forward one, two, three, four, five, and then go ahead and let's just trim it. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. We're gonna select on this image, we're gonna go to the mask and invert the mask. So as you can see, you have this really cool kind of like trippy illusion. So as you can see, if we play the video, it pops up one, two, three, four, five, scales down, one, two, three, four, five, the edges scale up. So it's just this really cool like scaling up paper effect. And of course, you can go ahead and take that idea and create your own different versions. Now what you wanna do is when you're done, you wanna select all of these, click on option G, and we'll just call this paper um, effect. And we'll just click on um, return. So basically what you're doing is you're just creating a compound clip. That way you'll be able to see what's behind it. So we go ahead and wait for it to render and we place the paper effect on top of another photo. As you can see, see now you can see that, that that black line, that black space right there because we created a compound clip. Now you can see stuff underneath it. So simple as that, that's how you um, do that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you another way is basically take this paper overlay, place it on top of the photo. We're gonna go ahead and just simply trim it. We're gonna select on this one, blend mode, change it to stencil alpha. 
we are going to duplicate the paper overlay. So simply duplicate the paper overlay, head to the blend mode, change the blend mode to screen. And then of course you can select on the photo itself and increase the, you know, the scale, rotation, all that kind of stuff. Select all of them, click on option G, and we'll just call this one. You wanna create a compound clip because if we create a compound clip, now you can see the stuff behind it. So if you can't see the image or the video behind the paper overlay, you have to create a compound clip. That way you can actually, now we can see, we can see the photo behind the paper overlay. And there you go. Those just a couple um, different ideas. And you know, of course, you do your own, you know, come with your own ideas. That is just, you know, one or two different ways to use really cool paper overlays. Now again, they're from Brian Delmata. The link is down in the description below. The last effect I wanna go over is this really cool like scribble effect. So what you wanna do is you wanna go through the video and then kind of just figure out where you wanna take screenshots. So I wanna place an M, so over here, I'm just clicking on the M key to create markers. And what you wanna go is go to each one of these frames, go over here to export and click on save current frame. And then again, do the exact same thing that I showed you before and you're just basically like taking a quote unquote screenshots of the video so go over here export go to save current frame and then export that frame click on next of course make it jpeg png whatever you want you can also go over here click on this and click on add destination and if you don't see the save current frame in here you can just drag that into your destination and that should work nine times out of ten if it doesn't if this still doesn't work let me know and i will try to fix it but they're just simply taking screenshots of the video and then you're basically printing them off so as you can see this is what it looks like i just simply imported these images into a google doc and then i just simply printed out all five of these images obviously to my printer and then of course I took like a marker you know a pen a whiteout pen and basically just drew on the actual images all five images as you can see right here I drew on all five images you just kind of keep repeating that step come up with some creative ideas it's completely up to you and then once you you, you drew on all the individual frames you're simply going to scan it um, to your computer of course in this case I scanned it to my phone and then I just like airdropped it to my computer there are a whole different different methods you can do but that is just what I did and then you're simply going to import Import that scan document into Final Cut. So if I go over here, so let's scroll down until we find the scan document. And then as you can see, here we go. Here is the scan document. Simply place it on top of your uh, on top of your um, clip or wherever you want it. Now we're going to take the rotation. We're going to change it to negative 90. And then you're simply going to just increase the scale of the video. So let's go out to something like 50%, and we're just going to increase the scale of the image. I think something I changed to like a 620. So you're simply going to increase the scale and then just of course adjust the position until you get the look that you want and we're going to increase the scale a little bit more and then go over here and then as you can see see there we go now let's adjust the position so there we go there was like the first frame then all you would do is click on like command b you would just keep blading the clip five or six times however many times you wanted and then select on it select on the image and then either you could take the y position move it up to the next frame or you could take the x position and move it over to the next frame and of course just simply adjust the position and adjust the scale until you get the look that you want and you're just going to kind of repeat this step just keep you adjusting the position and scale as you can see so here's the first one and then on to the next one then you just keep repeating um, those steps and just simply line up um, the different images anyways hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you found it helpful and informative if you enjoy these types of videos definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you're looking for some really cool final cut pro plugins presets transitions and overlays definitely go ahead and check out my digital store the link is down in the description below anyways i will see you in the next one Peace.